I'm known as Manny Maris. My name is Bruce Lee Galanter. This is Downtown, Downtown Music, Music Gallery. Gallery. I worked for about a year and a half for a distributor called Jim. My, my job is to call people. I'm a salesperson. Lunch for Your Ears was the name of a record store that I started and owned for seven years, from 85 to 91. I knew I was doing a good job serving my customers and also getting the records that I wanted to be in the store, regardless of how difficult everyone who was supposed to be able to supply them to me, i.e. distributors, made it because my distributors hated me. I start reading this list to the guy on the other end of the uh, phone. And as soon as I get into this list, he goes, listen, this is the way the relationship's gonna work. I said, okay. He put me on hold. And about two minutes later, some guy came on. He said, what'd you say to that guy? You freaked him out. I said, I, 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 just, told him, I just told him exactly what I will and won't stand for when I deal with any distributor. So then they put him back on, and we start a little relationship. And he finally, I don't know if it was that call or a few calls later, he goes, I know you. You go to the Knitting Factory. Your store is right around from the Knitting Factory. I go to the Knitting Factory. I said, uh, yeah, I do. I said, well, next time you think you see me, come up to me and say hello. I go in the store, and there, lo and behold, is Manny Maris, who I've never met. And I look at him, and I say, I know you. You're the guy that used to sell buttons. worked for Jim for about a year and a half. The, the place was mismanaged by the guys that ran it, who siphoned a lot of money off and did all kinds, there's all kinds of terrible stories. I got a job at a place called Vinyl Mania on Carmine Street, which had six or seven stores. So I worked there for a year and eventually this store didn't do well and they let me go. And then Manny had heard that I was working there and called me and said, would you like to work for me? And I said, yeah. Manny's store had an interesting philosophy. Everything he sold in his store would go into two categories, vocal music and non-vocal music. And that was it. And people would say, come in, they go, where's your jazz section? Where's your classical section? Where's your folk section? And he would say, those sections don't, don't matter. What I was interested in were the kinds of things that when you went to other stores to find them, they'd always put them in the wrong place or there was no right place for them. I mean, is Last Exit Jazz? Is it rock? On and on and on. So I found that the most interesting records for me were generally the uncategorizable, at least by the old systems of the record companies and the record retailers and the record stores and all that. I think what the term downtown kind of did is it made people realize that those categories don't really matter because you can draw from whatever you want and you can, and if it works and you put it together in a smart way then you have showed that those categories didn't matter. It's only marketing people that came up with terms to, to help sell stuff. I had lunch for years through, technically through the end of May 91. Uh, by that time, Bruce and I had parted ways and he got together with some other investors and started Downtown Music Gallery, which opened at the beginning of May 91. When the store first opened in 91, uh, Manny had disappeared. Nobody knew where he was. He was allegedly living on the street. He had problems. And people would come in the store and they would say, have you seen Manny? For about the entire 90s, I wasn't involved in anything having to do with music scene or anything else. In fact, most people didn't know 
where to find me, locate me, whatever. I finally returned to the scene around 2000. One of the traditions that started in Manny's old store, Lunch for Your Ears, was that they have free concerts on uh, Friday nights. And I always thought that was a beautiful thing, because number one, you don't get to see a lot of free music in New York. And in the early days, a lot of downtown people would, would love to play, because it was an intimate situation. People would take you seriously. The audience was, would, would you know sit at your feet and listen and not talk. And I, thought, I always thought that was a great thing. So I decided to continue that tradition when we opened Downtown Music Gallery in 91. <laughs> Now, the Stone has been around, I think, nine years or ten years now. And it's curated, which means a different musician picks the people who play there. Originally, a musician had a month, and then eventually that became too much, then it was two weeks, and then after that he gave it to labels, and labels would have either a month or two weeks. Manny approached Zorn and said, listen, I want to do a birthday party for myself in December, and I'd like to use the Stone to do the birthday party. And Zorn says, well, I'll do you something better. How about this? How about I'll let you and Bruce curate an entire month and you could pick whoever you want to play. So Manny calls me and he goes, who do you want to book? And I said, Manny, this is going to be our opportunity to make history, to do something great, to do something amazing. I'm going to pick 25 of my favorite musicians from around the world and have them play. And I said, you know, the only way I'm gonna get this to work 
is I'm going to have to offer each of these musicians transportation money. So I had been saving cash in a piggy bank. Um, I contacted 30 musicians, 25 said yes, from around the world, all my favorite people. And I said, I'd like you to play at my fest. This is an important thing. I asked three members of Henry Cow, who had not played together in like 20 years, uh, to play. And they said, generally, we wouldn't do this. We're still friends. We just don't move in the same circles. But for you, we would do this. And they all said yes. I sent a thousand dollars cash in the mail <laughs> to each one of these people uh, and put together an incredible month. I had to put some of these people in hotels. I had somebody who would pick these people up at airports and, and cart them around. And I hired two friends of mine to film and to videotape every set. <laughs> Michael Moore, who's a sax player from ICP Orchestra, I become friendly with him. He played two nights with different groups of New York musicians. Decisi Munoz is a guitar player, friend of mine who I was introduced to from Henry Kaiser, and he played with Marilyn Crispell for the first time on stage. Initially, the thing we wanted most to happen was uh, Keith Tippett, that's me and Manny's favorite piano player, British. He never comes to, to, to the U.S. He wanted $1,000 per man per set, a place to stay, a nice hotel. He wanted like too much. So what we decided to do was we asked the other three members of that band, Paul Dunmall, on sax, Paul Rogers on bass, and Tony Levin on drums. We asked them to play instead, without Tippett, and they said, well, fine. They were happy to do it. So they started the festival off, and on, they played Friday, Saturday, Sunday. On Saturday and Sunday, we had guests sit in with them. <laughs> It was an incredible amount of great music. And I was there every night, and I got to introduce all the bands every night, and it was a beautiful thing.
on a fantastic month of, of materials. Probably the most, you know, I mean, there's been a lot of exciting stuff to Stone. I can't say that his was the best month that ever happened, but it was certainly up there. It ended with uh, Nels Klein, played two nights, one night with Zena Parkins, one night in a quartet with Vinnie Golia, who's from the West Coast and so, one of my favorite players. They played an amazing set. I, I like that set to come out. <laughs> Thank you. 
Whether you're a, a good listener or a musician, you should come visit us when you can um, and support us. Or if you're a musician, you could bring us your wares, bring us your CDs, your vinyl. Um, just come and talk. This is a friendly place. We have free music here every Sunday at 6 o'clock. You can go online to check who it is. It's always somebody interesting. So come on down. There is no guide when you're on the computer. It's willy-nilly and nonetheless tends to gravitate towards the, the best known things. Sometimes to reach a place that you yourself even can't imagine, there has to be a collision of unforeseen circumstances and this is one of the few record stores that provides those happy accidents.